people go like, well, how did you choose accounting? But uh, my brothers are all engineers. And I said, I'm not going to be an engineer anymore, so I, I'll, I'll count money. Wow. <laughs> wow, love it. <laughs> I'm going to count money and uh, determine how much taxes you get paid. Hello and welcome to my podcast series, CPS Unplugged. Today on the show, we've got a very special guest, Lance Brand. He's the managing partner, the founder of Capstone CPAs uh, in this amazing place, Bend in Oregon. Lance, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you. So Lance, uh, your journey, where did you start? Where did Capstone start? Your journey in accounting and then starting Capstone, the entrepreneurial piece and how has it been? It's been great. It's, uh, I look back, we were talking earlier, but when we look back and it's just been an amazing journey to get to where I'm at, at now. I can't believe I got here. And so, but basically, uh, I think I'm living the American dream. Went to college, first generation college people. and. Wow. Uh, and then uh, people go like, well, how did you choose accounting? But uh, my brothers are all engineers. And I said, I'm not going to be an engineer anymore. So I, I'll, I'll count money. Wow. wow love it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to count money and uh, determine how much taxes you get paid uh, or taxes you're going to owe. So, uh, but yeah, that's basically, I said, hey, let's go a different route. So I became an accounting major and I love math. I just love math. And Matt, if you're a math person, you kind of like accounting and stuff like that. So, uh, but, but I went to cool. I went to school at Oregon State, uh, graduated in 91. Um, Married a bride, my bride to be uh, two weeks after school, um, and basically we just uh, started working at. And I went to a big, big national firm, Price Waterhouse Cooper's. Two weeks after school, you like how, how old were you when you when you got married? Oh yeah, I mean yeah, I was a baby. They uh, <laughs> and uh, I looked young for my age. So I so so they, didn't, they I was twenty one when I got married. My wife was twenty two. Uh, wow. She she graduated, so that's unusual for nowadays. Uh, nowadays you don't do that, but it was actually really a good thing for us. Uh, you know I. I definitely had a fun college career, so like it wasn't like we didn't party in college, uh, but it definitely calmed you down. And and basically, both of us, you know, we moved in together. We started our lives. She's a first grade teacher, so wow. she had a teaching job, and then I was an accountant. So I worked at Price Waterhouse Coopers, and I worked on uh, some uh, higher end jobs. So it wasn't a, a local accountant. Price Waterhouse Coopers is one is one of the biggest national yeah. CPA firms, and. Uh, we used to do audits and go take companies public. So I was on a lot of public transactions going IPO on the stock exchanges for about seven years. That sounds kick ass. It does. It was, it was <laughs> honestly, to tell you the truth, if you want to, I was in Chicago, New York, LA. So these companies would go on the West side, West Coast, would go public, and you'd work with Morgan Stanley and a lot yeah. of underwriters. And you'd have to put like financials together. So I used to be an investment banker at Morgan Stanley, so yeah, 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 yeah. I used to deal with you. Oh, and the Morgan Stanley guys, they're a lot, par they're Harvard partiers. So yeah, a lot more partiers than accountants, but they got us going. So accounts can get crazy too. So, uh, but no, that was fun. It was, it was one of those jobs where um, I came out of college. I always laugh. My wife always laughs at me too, but I came out of college about 170 pounds. And after about three years of being in accounting, I was 230. Wow, amazing. <laughs> and, you, you parted enough. I think you gave the Morgan Stanley guys a run for their money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it was a lot of work, a lot of things. And then you kind of come down a little bit in weight. But uh, but no, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of fun. But you was technically, I mean, you worked on a lot of public companies. And it was like, you learned a lot. I mean, you so met some pe people that- like a kick-ass downtown guy. Yeah, exactly. And so it was, it was- Wall it, Street. Yeah, uh, well, I don't know if I was watching. I was, no, I really was nothing, but I was, me, I was, I was helping a lot of people go public. And there's a lot of companies that went, you know, on the stock exchange that, like, I can still look at their symbols and go, hey, I took that. That was part of that oh, public wow. offering. So wow. that was kind of interesting. Wow. So, so, so then, basically, after seven years of working at Coopers, um, my had Kathy and my wife and I uh, had our first kid was coming down the pipe, and I said, hey, I want to move back to Bend, Oregon, where I, I kind of grew up. And Bend, Oregon is, uh, if you don't know Bend, Bend's kind of like an Aspen, Colorado, kind of a nice high mountain place. Um, and it was, I was probably more like isolation before when I went to college, but now it's kind of a nice place. Everyone wants to live in, you know, Bend, Oregon and stuff like that. So. Maybe because you've sort of been here, built this yeah, yeah, firm. So, and yeah, <laughs> it was crazy. It's, it's, it's been crazy. Anyone that's been living here, it's, uh, we, I started the door in, um, in 2003 with no, uh, no clients clients in day one so my uh, for three years I was just breaking even uh, not making any money um, and so I told you earlier my wife wanted to divorce me after three years and then uh, then it started clicking so the company started growing and then once so we the got pressure from home <laughs> got things going yeah exactly <laughs> yeah and so uh, it's been a journey uh, and we first right off the bat we were just doing you know small tax returns individuals business and then once we got to about seven employees we started making money um, 
And so every time we've added an employee after seven employees, we it's actually added value to the firm. And we've always had value to the clients, but we've just kept going from there. So wasn't it a culture shock, Lance, right? You're working for a big four. You're working, like, you know, everything's taken care of. You're partying, you're having a good time. <laughs> uh, big cities or what? Yeah. And, and suddenly you leave all of that. And then you say, I'm going to go back to where I started and uh, build this from scratch, have no clients, nothing, mm -hmm. uh, hustling my way through. I mean, yeah. I mean, how was it? I mean, <laughs> it was difficult. I actually, what I find is that when you're, you're a small town CPA, you're actually like part of the family. When your clients come in, you're actually helping them help them be successful in life. So it's not only on an individual client, you're helping them be successful, but on your small business clients, they really need help. I mean, they don't. Typically, small business clients don't know how to do the books. They don't have a controller. They don't have a person yeah. doing payroll. And so, they're just passionate about what they do. Yeah, they're passionate. They're they're they need help. They need more than just you know, hey, I need a tax return. And so, most of the time, it was not uncommon that we would we would be doing bookkeeping, payroll, and their taxes, and just helping them their compliance side of the business. And they just said, hey, Lance, just take care of it. Get it done. I don't want to deal with it. And so, oh, that's that's the way I, we kind of. I kind of, you know, at first that was, uh, uh, my goal was just to take the compliance side off small business and just say, hey, we're here to help you out. We'll get it done, just let us do it. And so that's kind of the mantra that we started with small business clients, so. Amazing. And, and for you personally, was it like very fulfilling? Uh, I mean, of course, at PwC, you were helping big, big people get bigger. Yeah. And here you're supporting small businesses. I mean, uh, and then you, the entrepreneurial spirit, how do you make money? How do you make ends meet? I love emo um, I love actually being emotional with my clients and actually telling them what to do. And so actually handshaking and hugging people is my normal thing. So so I love the working with small business clients, helping them out. Um, you know, I, I, I at Cooper's, you would probably never get uh, emailed by the head of the company. <laughs> In the small business clients, you're getting emailed by that, that head of the company every week. You know, like it's saying, hey, I need help this or, um, I'm hiring someone, can he give me an HR help? But most of the time, uh, a lot of my clients that I first started with, I have my first client, they're an HVAC company, but they're still with me after 31 years. And uh, they are one of the biggest HVAC companies in, in the region and, oh. and, and, and it started. And they they were just like me. I, you, typically, when you start your CPA firm, your clients are a lot like you. They're, they're, they have no money, they have no resources. <laughs> and now- They grow together. Yeah, yeah, grow together. Yeah, and, and many of my clients are of, already retired and everything like that, but they've created great businesses. They've done well in their life. So over the years, it's it's been kind of enjoyable to say, hey, that, you know, I always, I always like to say, yeah, that's my client or, you know, or something like that. So, but yeah, there's, hopefully it's been a mutual relationship with your clients that you want them to do well, they want you to do well, because everyone does well, you know, that's kind of like you're, you're buying, you're buying bread from everyone. So, uh, and that's how it works. And so it's kind of a, it's kind of enjoyable. I mean, I just, I look back and I just can't believe we have over 2,500 business clients and 7,000 into, oh, we have about 9,000 individual clients. So, yeah. I mean, it's just impossible to imagine how you <laughs> deal with all of that. And, and yeah. you still have time to send into a podcast with me. I mean, that's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't worry, man. I'm working late tonight. So, uh, so no, no, no. But no, I, uh, um, I enjoy my life. One of the things I really like is like, I, I've had two kids. My kids are 27 and 25. They didn't go into accounting. I wish they did. But uh, they're financial planners and real estate people. So, uh, yeah. but um, what I found is that now that my kids are gone, um, it's more enjoyable, even more enjoyable to work because I get a lot of interaction with my clients and stuff like that. So um, most of my clients, I mean, they want to see me successful, but also once as you get older and your clients get older, they value just meeting with, they schedule time. They just want to meet with you for an hour, a quarter of, uh, you know, every three months and just say, Hey, um, I just want to meet with you to figure out what's going on and what you're doing. And, and guess what? You can bill me for it. And so, you know, and that's, that's one of the kind of relationships you want to have. Very sweet. Yeah. So you said you're living the American dream. Yeah. What's the American dream? I think the American dream is helping people. And I think once you get to that point where I have this definition of uh, uh, when you're rich, it's when you when you can control your time, but also when you're helping people. Okay. So yeah. So I do control my time. So um, I got very lucky. So I mean, came from nothing, um, paid for my college. When, when I actually came through, I think very good timing. College, when I went to college was six or 7,000 a year and now it's ridiculous. And so, but I paid for my college. Um, during college, I was actually a, 
a firefighter, a U.S. Forest Service firefighter. I played on the hot shot. I did some of the hot shot stuff uh, for. Do you fire do firefighting on your job today? No, no, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. They, there are fires going on, but different fires. But uh, but yeah, I used to be a Sawyer and uh, used to a bow saw and stuff. And wow, uh, and so so yeah, You're very but, brave. You know, I know I, I wasn't brave. I I loved it. I mean, and the endorphins are great. So my second best job ever was being a firefighter. It was it was a lot of fun. But uh, but get back to accounting. But it's just like I think most people want to enjoy or control their time, and so um, if you can get someone to a point in their life where they can control their time, that's kind of what I decide is rich. It's choice on time. When you can determine where you want to do and when you want to do it, that's when you know you've made it. And so that's what I'm trying to get my clients to and stuff like that. Sometimes most of the time that deals with money. And, and, and saving money in the future. But choice on time is really a very important concept that I tell my clients. And what would you say to, you know, a lot of ambitious people, right, who are high paying jobs. I mean, it could be accounting, could be any other field, right? You sort of, they're in a big company, you sort of settle and you're going to quit your job and start something from fresh. Of course, it could be, in, yeah. in your case, it's an accounting firm. Yeah. So how would you advise budding young entrepreneurs but there's a confusion between, okay, I live a good life working with a big company mm -hmm. or I quit and I start something on my own. I totally agree with that. Um, um, some people, you have to, uh, you have to kind of talk about what your mentality and what your purpose in life is. So some people do, are probably better employees than employers. Mm -hmm. And so you have to kind of address that situation. Employers are people that actually want to create value, but also want to create something for the community and stuff like that. And so... Um, and they act, it, and entrepreneurs are typically risk takers. And so they're going to take the risk to create a company. It doesn't matter if you're a, a sheet rocker, a plumber, a lawyer, a doctor, whatever it is, they're usually entrepreneur. They, they're, you, they're usually type A personalities and they want to be successful in life, but they want to be more than just, you know, working with someone else. And so, and, and I'm not saying that's bad or anything. I have some of my best clients just work for companies and we do wealth management and stuff like that for them. So you really, it's really up to your mentality of what you're doing in life. So some people work to have fun being a stand-up comedian or, or something like that. So everyone has a little bit too, but people being an entrepreneur. And then what I usually find with entrepreneurs is they don't understand how much compliance and cash and working capital takes to start a business. Yeah, it, that, and, and sometimes entrepreneurs jump into the water and they don't, they don't figure out how to swim. And yeah, yeah. many of them end up swimming. Some yeah. are like, okay, we some, tried, some, we failed. Yeah. yeah, some people don't understand. Like, I always, I, I like, I like the construction business because you're building a house or a commercial building or whatever. Um, but but you, entrepreneurs in Oregon don't need to worry, right? They can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but it's it's it, yeah. There's plenty of work to be done and stuff like that. But it's usually people don't understand how much working capital it takes to. You know, if you're a plumber and you start a business, you need a van, you need tools, you need this. And so you might need fifty to $100,000 of working capital. You need to figure out how to get that, like loans or parents or what are, are people, you know, so you're going to need some capacity. So, I mean, I lived the entrepreneur spirit, so I was very tight on the money. So for basically three years with my growth, it took me about three years to really turn that into a business that was successful. So the first three years, it was a struggle to get through, like paying payroll to your employees, doing all the things that I teach people how to do now. Amazing. Yeah. And you know, when you started accounting, right, working in accounting, I mean, of course, from, from big four, you started your own firm. Mm -hmm. What do you think has changed uh, in, in accounting? On, and what do you see the change happening in the next few years? Uh, the accounting field is, um, there's less and less people going into the accounting field because um, and and I still think it's one of the best industries in, in that you should go and, into. And why do you think why do you think that that problem is there? I mean, we talk about the accountant shortage, yeah. right? We say, yeah. but there was an article in the Washington Post which said the accountant shortage threatens capitalism's future. Yeah. So why is that the case, Lance? I mean, why is accounting not sexy anymore? <laughs> that's my that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's crazy. So I have two kids, and they at the same scenario. I think they would be a great a great accountants, but I think society has said that being an accountant isn't sexy. I think accounting is probably the sexiest job you can help. I mean, people really like you. A lot of people think the account, uh, accounting is all about numbers and all that stuff. It's actually all about relationships. It's also helping people and stuff like that. So um, the the big thing also is scarcity of resources. I really do think we are not having as many graduates that uh, are going to accounting, but also the scarcity of resources. But also we look at high tech, we look at mathematic jobs, engineering jobs, computer software, stuff like that. There's a huge demand for that. When I graduated, the routine was go work for a big firm for two years, get your CPA license, 
and then see what happens. Nowadays, people graduate and you know, you got big companies like Chevron or anything, they're giving them good salaries right out of the gate without being a CPA and they never become a CPA. Okay. So, so, so what's happening is they're actually the, the path to becoming a CPA usually doesn't happen. So like it used to be like everyone got a CPA, no matter what, you got your CPA license, your tax license, uh, that was great coming out of school. But now I would say there's probably 100% more people not getting their CPAs coming out of college because they're, they're going lazy, to- yeah. And, and the number of CPA exam takers are dropping year on year. Yeah, 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 exactly. And the CPA exam is not easy. It's not easy, but it shouldn't be easy. I pass it. So I mean, I, if I can pass it, anyone can pass it. But uh, but it's one of those things where it's really changed people's. It used to be that you did it routinely, and, and I think I don't think we do that now. We we basically allow. It's just not people it, the scarcity of resources because there are better jobs some some places. But I also think teaching in, in colleges don't tell you that this is a really great job. So what, what's happening in the industry right now is a lot of people are retiring, a lot of partners are retiring, and a lot of people are retiring, and they're, they're, they're just trying to come to other companies to sell their business or just join with other businesses. And that's how we've been growing. So we've grown to eight offices, we have 150 employees, um, but right now we have four, four companies that want to join, CPA firms that want to join us. Wow. Yeah, so it's just because, yeah. it's just because- You're it, doing all M&A stuff here. Yeah, yeah, M&A, um, we're also, the people just um, don't want to be doing HR, they don't want to be doing payroll, and they would just want to run the practice. So a lot of things have changed. So um, it's the other thing that's so changed this a lot. This is typically consolidation, right, Lance, in the in, 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 in typical investment banking terms, right? So yeah. a fragmented market now getting consolidated because yeah. there's a strong provider. I, I agree, it's going to be consolidated. I also think that the going back to young people, young people want to work around young people. They don't want to work around old partners. And so the other thing that we found that's very neat is like in the Bend office, we have about 22 employees here. Um, young people want to be around young people. They socialize, they go out, you know, you don't want to be hanging, you don't want to be in an office with five old people doing accounting work. <laughs> it's just not, I mean, part of your enjoyment in life is actually being around people. So that's kind of what we're seeing a lot. And then just the, um, the accounting profession has got a bad rap. For three months out of the year, you work really, really hard, January through April or you know, February through April, you work really, really hard, a lot of hours. You, you do work a lot of hours, but I can tell you right now, it is probably the easiest nine months after that, that, I mean, I was a coach of a soccer team. I, I You can pretty much schedule your life out. So you've been coaching every, a soccer team while you were running a CPA program? Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. I coached a soccer team, I did some other things. So you can do other things while, okay. you know, in the off season. So I really think that it's one of, the, and right now accounting is one of the more portable ac um, businesses that you can do remote. And you can work from your home. You know, once you get trained and all that stuff, you can work from anywhere. I was in Tahiti uh, last year on a vacation plan, and I did work from Tahiti. You know, like it wasn't that fun. It wasn't that easy. So you coach a soccer team. You work from <laughs> Tahiti. I mean, yeah. Aren't you like one of the coolest managing partners around? No, no, I wouldn't <laughs> say that. You, you have to talk to. But no, I'm just saying that uh, once you're trained, this is a very portable job, a job that you can do anywhere. I'm like, it, it's not like. You have to be in the office to get it done because most of the stuff is computerized, you know, computerized and uh, electronic. So, but you know, you can. The other thing is, is like in Tahiti, I had a phone system where they didn't even know I was in Tahiti, and I could call my clients and just they, they thought I was in my office because I could just grab my phone and, and do a go-to app. So they don't even know I'm in Tahiti, and when I'm calling them, so it's a very portable business. So now, uh, I mean, uh, so it's, it's so exciting. There's there's a sort of lot yeah. of advantages around it. Still, there's a shortage of accountants. I mean, so what do you think should be done? I mean, how do you think like one, two, three? I mean. How do we, let's say, in Oregon, in the region or in the country, I mean, what, what do you think are potential solutions? How do you make accounting sexy again? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think actually education is going to be have to be done at the college level. And then um, I think pay is going to have to go up a little bit for people, the employees and stuff too. So I think pay has to go up. I think work schedules are going to be different. Um, the other thing is, is I think we got to teach people to help people. I think one of the my biggest employees that my employees that do the best the value system the value right. system is is basically say hey you're helping someone we're helping yeah. someone yeah it's not helping it's not about you it's kind of like we have to you have to get some intrinsic value or extrinsic value from your clients so you're helping someone and I think after about two years a lot of our clients really do love just they love helping the clients and stuff like that so you're I, I think you have to have that extrinsic value to help the clients so. absolutely. Yeah. Now, how do you see the role of uh, technology in accounting, STEM in accounting? I mean, yeah. how, do you, how do you see that affecting uh, accounting? Do you think that as one of one of the pieces which will help sort of 
people get better work life balance uh, yeah. making it more exciting i mean let's say even from a miles perspective we're working with universities to uh, integrate stem and stem courses into accounting programs because mm. we want those graduate programs to be stem designated and also people to run analytics uh, and ai so so what's what's your take on tech um technology is going to be great and so i mean the stem program i mean we're working with you of course and uh we definitely think talent recruiting is going to be great through the STEM program and that you're working through the colleges and stuff like that. So technology is going to be great. You can get uh, anywhere to anyone to work for anything. And so and I think technology also is I think people can learn this technology because they're growing up with technology. So um, a lot of the people that are younger than me are way better in technology than I am. So uh, but um, I think the STEM programs are great. So we're, we're looking at very much in our system is creating a hub system where we actually have we're doing more more of the work on the back office and scenario and and then we can get better quality work get more work out and then help our clients so uh, we definitely are looking at hiring uh, stem program students from college for sure so, so lance we spoke about how you're building your bend office as as your hub and then you're going to have all the spokes which are all your other offices around Oregon and around the country. So this sort of sort of this is more like a hub and spoke model. The yeah. way the way this sounds. What's what's your take on let's say outsourcing and mm. uh, you know uh, uh, you've tried that outsourcing to a foreign country, India, Philippines, or you find it more comfortable. What's what's your opinion on that piece? We've tried to outsource, and so we've tried to outsource in the bookkeeping area, and so we have outsourced to um, other areas and stuff like that, and. What we find is the we still didn't get a great interaction with the people that were doing the work, and the quality of work wasn't as good as we thought we would get. It's it's not that it's bad. I, I think some people are doing it well. It's just that a smaller company, you just you need you need to you need to have a huge population. Of, you mean you need to be three or four thousand employees? Maybe it might work. But at our, I'm looking really for people. I'm actually looking for people in the STEM program that I want to treat like every other person in the world. I want people to be successful. I want people to do well. I want I want people. I want talent to come to the U.S. and and serve and be in the community. So the way I see uh, your perspective, Lance, is you seeing this. You see accounting as more a relationship business. Yeah. And you want people to have relationships inside of the firm and outside, and mm -hmm. sort of create that community. I mean, is is that is that the right way of looking at this? The last year we've had added thirty employees, and we need to add fifteen to twenty more. And what we found is the community and the culture matter more than the pay. What we found is. If they the community and culture counts more than the pay, and I think that yeah. that's sort of the reason why you're able to yeah. attract so much of talent, and yeah. uh, you know you're actually one of the fastest growing firms in the country. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, I, but I think culture matters, and it and it wasn't that I learned this; it was that I hired people that taught me how to do this stuff and everything like that. But um, culture matters more than the pay. It does. If you can treat people well, um, it helps them. So if you're treating clients well, you treat employees well. Simple things like. We have unlimited PTO at our company as long as you're meeting your budgets. So if someone wanted to take three weeks off, they can take three weeks. They have to get it scheduled and stuff like that. But we're one of the first CPA firms to ever say PTO plus. Wow. It's, it's, so if you get, you, you know, there's certain times you can't take it off every March, but of course. June and July, November, December, if you got your work done and you're doing well, you meet all your budgets and all that stuff, and you're a good person, you can take off five weeks of vacation. Wow. And so, and that's unheard of in this field. So it's all about how you do. So you've like mastered the work-life integration, is what I would say. Oh, we're doing it this year. We haven't mastered it, but uh, but we are we we are the first firm I've heard of that did PTO plus, which means you basically can do as much PTO as long as you're meeting your goals. And what what else do you do? I mean, what sort of makes Capstone so attractive? How do you become one of the secret recipes? And we are on camera, yeah. so every other firm's. I, know. I think we also have a vision that we want. We, if you, we want to help you get to where you want to go. So, um, in smaller firms, typically all you're worried about is getting stuff out. But we, after you've been for with our firm for a year, you get your evals and stuff, and we kind of say, what What are your goals? Your goals might not be with our firm. Your goals might be, hey, I want to be my own entrepreneur or whatever. So we we are goal setting with clients or with employees, and so it's. I think a lot of it is just that that touch. And then also, I think the quality of, I really think hiring young people and putting young people around young people is really good. So you're pretty inspired by the Gen Zs. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm inspired. I'm inspired. Uh, yeah, they're, uh, they always want me to go out and drink with them or party with them, but I'm not like. So I think it's, 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 it's <laughs> with your own son. I, then... <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I think they want my credit card. I think you really got to create that, uh, that, that culture. It's more important than now. I mean, social media is huge. 
and you know people like you know TikTok, all the stuff and i'm you know i'm all into it i got i got a twitter handle you basically have you know there's a lot of influences in life absolutely and, and you know as a matter of fact right uh, one of my uh, business partners who are, so i run a tech venture it's a mm-hmm. joint venture where my, my partner on the other side he's uh, 24 years old now i mean we started off when he was 19 mm-hmm. and uh, we, we partnered together we sort of created that that venture and sort of scaling up pretty well on the on the technology side and he's been into branding, narrative, uh, you know, and he, he started doing all the podcasts with all yeah. the tech leaders in India. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, you're doing it. I got to do it too. And that's why I'm here today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I probably couldn't do my own podcast. But um, but yeah, social media and, and technology is really important for the young, young people starting in this profession. So Lance, what is your uh, opinion uh, of the entire uh, Miles model, uh, which is which is number one, starts with sort of working with universities, evangelizing STEM and accounting, mm-hmm. getting them to convert their graduate accounting programs into STEM, sort of using the tech playbook, right? So yeah. uh, uh, if you look at the tech world, right? So uh, a lot of that masters in computer science and some of the programs, and then you have a lot of engineers coming in uh, from India and from around the world mm-hmm. who are eligible to work in the US for a few years, and of course, then they can go back, stay back, all the other options. So what do you think that of this model? I mean, it's been like a couple of years we've been doing this, of bringing an accountant uh, on shore, uh, on site, uh, ready to work. Uh, of course, there are, there are challenges. They're coming in from a different culture. Uh, they're, they're hardworking, but, you know, uh, excited about you know what we call the great american dream mm-hmm. uh, so what what is your opinion you've you've hired like seven of these accountants already so mm-hmm. what's what's your perspective what are your suggestions and recommendations as we scale this up from my perspective i see that i can hire a lot of people at one time and i think creating that culture is even more important so we you know we're 22 people now we want to get to 50 people and i think having 50 people work together is very important Absolutely. and i think the culture of of the STEM program makes a lot of sense to me because everyone has talent, but this the STEM program, we just don't have enough scarcity. With scarcity, I think this is really good for us. So we would love to hire it. We're trying to go to 15 next year or so. Um, but yeah, we would love to hire the program. And I think hiring in groups is better. You don't hire one person. I think you want to create a culture of you know people from India. You probably need to hire four or five people at once and help them you know, get used to the area. But there no, I treat people no differently from wherever they're from. I don't care where they're from. Um, I want people to be living the American dream. I want them to stay. I want them to master. I want to be on the goal set. Um, but I really want talent. I don't really care where you came from because I didn't come from anywhere. Um, I, I just want people to be living the American dream and be successful. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that we have, uh, you know, all of the folks uh, joining in and, you know, I spoke to a couple of them. They're super excited. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, they're still figuring out the geography for it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And they're excited about exploring and they're like, uh, and you're supporting them with, you know, housing and yeah. a lot of things are taken care of. So they already feel very welcome. Uh, so we actually, so it's not unusual for, for us to help in housing. This is one of the, I think the, things that people should be looking at is that when we hire people, we started three years ago, we do temporary housing up to a year for them or, or more, depending on what they want to do. But we will actually go out and get housing for people. So uh, that's a pretty big thing because if you're moving from you know, LA to Bend and you don't know the area, we can say, hey, we can get you one bedroom, two bedroom, house, three, two, whatever you need. So housing is pretty important. We'll get it and we'll lease it up for a year for you. So, so isn't it exciting to work at Capstone, right? I'm in a big city. I'm yeah. tired of all the noise, and I and I get to stay in the mountains. I go, I can go hiking, I can go skiing, and, and yeah. I can work, and yeah. and, I, and I can get the PTO plus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, this isn't this too cool? It is. It actually sometimes I look at it and I go, it is probably too cool. But no, it it is some work. But I mean, most people are most you get the you get the feel of people because what we're when we interview people, we want people that are intergender and people that have goals, they want to set goals. Um, so yeah, it's, I mean, I, I honestly think a lot of people coming into this profession, they can go mountain bike in the morning or ski, like we have a skiing in the winter, so you go ski in the morning, but you can still work after skiing and get your eight hours in, nine hours in. So there's, I mean, this profession is changing so much that you don't have to have them in your, don't have to have them in their seat at 8.30. So, I mean, it's really good to be kind of in your seat, but we have options. If you say, hey, I want to go ski a day, you can make it up. So 
I think that's kind of the, what, what people want. I think a lot of accountants from India will have to learn skiing first. But yeah. <laughs> That's actually going to be our fun trip this yeah. year. First, you learn skiing. Second year, okay, ski a little bit. And third year, make sure you don't get hit by the trees. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> yes, yeah, don't fall in the holes. And so, but uh, yeah, we will. I'm, I'm, that's what I'm looking forward to is a little, a little fun there. And so, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, we're just trying to make it. We also, I think as we get bigger, we have more options for people. So um, more work plans. Uh, when you're a smaller company, when we were 10, size of 10 employees, it was difficult to have someone out of the office. But now with 150 employees, you know, if someone's not in the, in the office, they can make it up. You know, someone can cover. And Lance, how do you see career progression within the firm? And you, you, know, you said goal setting like a couple of times, right? So, uh, you know, one is, of course, my short term goals. I, mm. I got to make sure I'm, I'm serving my clients. I'm doing a good job for this year. Mm. How do I move up the ladder at Capstone? And, and I, I could be, uh, you know, a domestic accountant. I could be an international accountant. Mm. But how do I move up the ladder as I sort of, let's say, if I, if I join as a staff accountant, I'm aspiring to be a partner. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, how long does it take? If, if assuming I, I really work hard and I go skiing only once a year, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, that's a good question. Actually, it's a good question. Um, everyone's a little different. Like uh, we had one, we had someone that actually came from another firm, worked four years, um, but was very talented. And in six months, he was on partner track and he became a partner in two years. So that's amazing schedule. But like, if you come right out of college, typically um, you're probably partner track is you know you have to get your CPA license typically that, that's, that's uh, non-negotiable yeah, yeah yeah it's non-negotiable you have to get your CPA license if you want to be a partner track but typically that's two years and then typically three years after that you literally could be a partner in our firm in five years Got it. and the movement is all based upon what you do so we have people that we you start out with staff account we have people that become senior accountants in six months if they're really good and then we have people that stay at staff account for three years because they're not migrating and we sometimes nudge, say, hey, you know, this might be not your profession, but, but yeah, I mean, we help people. We don't, it's pretty, that, pretty that, exciting, right? Yeah, it's, so it's, it's all based on your motivation. If you can, you know, I think experience matters, um, but with us, you can see everything. I mean, in a bullpen or working with other people, uh, you can see an S Corp return, a partnership return, an individual return, tie it all together. And you see a lot of things going on, and that's that's very different from let's say when I when I were to work with a with a very large accounting firm, yeah. Versus I work with let's say Capstone, right? So yeah. uh, so you know there of course the the trajectory is set. Even if you're super talented, of course you can expedite, you can, yeah. you can be faster, but you still have to go through the process because there's so many other people here. It's like you know if I'm good at my work, I'm good at relationships, I'm committed. People that work in a small business, uh, CPA or a small CPA firm, learn it way faster. It's not, I mean, you work for Price Waterhouse, when I worked at Price Waterhouse Coopers, um, you would be working on partnerships and that's all you'd be working on for two years. Like very yeah, specialized. One very thing. specialized. Here, you'll do a partnership for the person because a person might own like eight different companies. So you might do a partnership at S Corp and individual return first year. And you're going to learn all that in the first year. And that's something that would take three or four years at a, at a, at a bigger firm. So you, so it's all based upon how you handle it, but we will give you review comments and everything like that. But based on the capacity and the scarcity, you literally move faster in a small firm. You, if it's all up to you, it's really all up to you. I want to create everyone a, uh, a position. Like if you want to be a partner someday in five years, hey, let's do it. I mean, there's, there's plenty of work out there. I mean, I think because of the, the, the scarcity of accounts, people retiring, this is this profession is going to be, if you want to do it, you can do it's, it. It's a void. I mean, you can just, uh, if you're yeah. like a committed person coming in here, you're honest. And we probably bring in 100 clients in Central Oregon a month because of new clients and people coming in. So there's unlimited capacity of clients that are coming in uh, like to Central Oregon. You already have 9,000. Yeah, 9,000 clients. I, there's no reason we shouldn't be at 10, 12, 13, two years. I mean, doesn't it like bamboozle you sometimes? Don't you like to toss and turn in bed thinking of 9,000 clients? I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, so what usually I tell people is the first time you buy a house and you have a big mortgage, you toss in bed and can't sleep. I do the same thing every time we go to another thousand clients. I go, oh my gosh, we got a lot of stuff going it's on. It's a lot man. of accountability, a lot <laughs> yeah. of responsibility, and you can't let anybody down and yeah. every client's important yeah exactly every every client's important i don't care if it's a little old lady yeah. or the richest guy in town or, or whatever it's everyone should be treated the same so amazing, amazing. yeah so i'm gonna have some rapid fire questions Let, let's let's warm it up tea or coffee okay <laughs> <laughs> coffee oh, of course you yeah, yeah. are you an early bird or a night owl early bird four five five a.m what up. do you do when you get up so early i'm usually checking emails clients email me a lot so i'm usually 
Like, do you want to take a run in the mountains and then check the email? No, uh, no. Actually, so <laughs> that's a good place. No, no, that's a great question. I actually check emails five, six, seven, and then I'm not in great shape, but I'm starting to work out. That's when I work out at seven to eight. And then I show up at the office at 8.30. Wow. Yeah. Well, we're like a very, very disciplined yeah, accountant. I'm, okay. Yeah, yeah. One word for the future of accounting. Unlimited. Okay. That's an interesting word. Yeah. Your, your go-to strategy for stress relief during the tax season. I, uh, Beer? No, 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 no. <laughs> actually, uh, I, I, alcohol isn't a relief for me or anything like that. But um, I actually like I actually like interaction with the staff. So I try to give everyone a nickname. I, I tell everyone, hey, this is good. you're going to make it. What's, so I, what's your nickname? Oh, I got some new, uh, they got me, they, I have a few nicknames. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Shadow, some other ones, but yeah, they, but they, uh, they, but I, uh, I like to have nicknames, but I also like to cheer on the group and say, hey, you're going to make it. So the tax season can be uh, a we lot of work. To. Yeah. April 15th, there's a time deadline. You got a hundred things on your, uh, on your menu for, and you're going, okay, this is how you handle it. You tell the client, you know, you, you help the client, but, uh, I've been through 31 tax seasons, so you know it's kind of one of those things. So you you know you're going to make it, and most of the time you're as long as you're communicating to the clients, you're going to be fine. One of the biggest challenges in today's accounting world. I I really do think human resources and talent, and talent is it, talent is it. So, and just uh, getting the talent is. In, yeah, I think one of the things that we're doing in this podcast is we're trying to make accounting cool, sexy, and tell them, okay, hey, do our jobs for you, and <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, talent is everything. So that's definitely we appreciate the work and your your help. Okay, any uh, one business tool, Lance, that you can't do without? So yeah. many. <laughs> yeah, there's so many. Uh, uh, I think the uh, I hate to tell you this, the phone is one of the best inventions ever. The iPhone and everything like that. Yeah. So I mean, you can't deal without. You want to talk about BlackBerry to iPhone? <laughs> yeah, yeah. A black I did have one. So, but, uh, but yeah, but yeah, the iPhone you cannot deal without. I mean, it made your life. It makes you know your emails go there, your systems go there, everything goes there. So. You you can do a lot of things outside the office that you when we we could not do that when we first started you had to be in the office we only had phones I didn't even have email when I first started at Cooper's so uh, yeah there wasn't even computers the computers were a green box and so yeah and so it was crazy we had you know secretaries instead of computers yeah. and, and so uh, it's uh, it's the world's changed what are the favorite aspects of working with local businesses I think the biggest issue is you. Um, you participated in their success, and you see them success. Yeah, them yeah. Go with them. and yeah. you want them to be successful. Don't ever, yeah. You want you want your clients to do as better than you and and do it well because they're going to help the community. I mean, so so we have accountants who know accounting, audit, tax, but mm -hmm. what's that one skill that every accountant should have? Time management, a little bit. Yeah, they have to they have to know how to manage their time. Okay, one of the best advices you've ever received. The best advice I ever had. This is kind of crazy. It's it, later in life. My dad told me this. He says, you know, Monday through Friday is just a time frame. It's just a frame of work. So think about 40 hours don't have to be done in Monday through Friday. You can work Saturday and Sunday and make it up, you know, stuff like that. So don't think of time crunches. Like there's, there's an unlimited amount of time in life. And so, wow. yeah. And so, you know, you can go home at three o'clock in the afternoon, but you can make it up later. So don't think of Monday and Friday and then you have to be off Saturday, Sunday. Cause you can be off Wednesday. Think about a different time frame in your life. It's weird, but it's not weird. I think it's it's it's, it's, it's very, very sensible, right? Yeah, I mean, and people try to box it up in such a way, and they get stressed, and because they just walk, yeah. unbox it, unbox it, unbox your time, unbox your because you have a lot of time. You really only work eight hours a day. You sleep eight hours, and what do you do the other eight hours? I don't know, but you, you do something. But you know, on the weekend, you, you you can you can move your time around. It doesn't have to be just Monday through Friday, which is really a. I mean, I wish people wouldn't think Monday through Friday. And so that's, you know, could be any time. Reason. So, yeah. Uh, so if you weren't in accounting and you weren't a firefighter, because that, that's what we like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I'd be a firefighter, tell you. <laughs> so if you were an accountant or a firefighter, what would you be? What would Lions plan be? Lions plan be? Um, I would love to, I'd love, I'd love to be a coach. I'd like to be, I'd like to coach soccer. I love soccer. Um, I was, played soccer in high school and stuff like that, but I'd love to just, Coach people, stuff like that. So, we, we, do you also play soccer a lot? Oh, no, no I'm, I'm, that's a long time ago when I was skinny. So, uh, but yeah, I played, I played high school soccer, did pretty well. And, and, I, and I did coach a little bit of uh, kids and all the way through, you know, to the high school level, a JV level. And then, uh, but yeah, I just liked helping people. So is that, is that coaching and cheerleading? I mean, and, and that's, that's whether you're in the bullpen or in office yeah. or the soccer field. I mean, is, is, is that the common thing that sort of 
yeah, really I, inspires you, mentoring people, coaching people, yeah, I cheering know. them. Yeah, I agree. I mean, <laughs> I agree. I, and so, so here's a here's a here's a good thing. I've had clients many times go, man, you look like a football coach sometimes. Like you're just coaching me. You, you are a football coach. coach. Yeah, and so, so I'm like, I'm like. They're like, and I go, yeah, that's because like, I want you to do, be successful. I want you to do that. I want you to do this. And then when you do it, I'm just going to go, yay. And then I'm going to bill you. <laughs> 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 Everyone's got to make money. So, 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 but, but my, I, I think that's kind of like, if you think of your job as a coach, then uh, that's what you kind of do. I've had many clients say, you kind of remind me of your football, my, my football coach in high school. I'm like, yeah, I'm just trying to help you get. You're using like, the coach, the, the skills on the field. Yeah. Yeah. In, in a CPA firm. Yeah. With your clients mm -hmm. and your employees. Amazing. Yeah. But you like mastered it, Lance. No, 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 no. I'm not that good. Some people say, but I'm just saying those things help you. So actually, if, you, if you're going to be a CPA, I think you should be coaching Little League sports, doing other things in the community that help you relate to other people. So if you were to have a superpower, rather, if you had an option to have a superpower, what would that be? I know you'll like, we will list there. We could choose one. <laughs> <laughs> um, superpower. That would be interesting. Uh, maybe... Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, if I could fly, that'd be great. You know, fly around the area. But then you can fly to the IT. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> if I could go, if I could go fly home right now and work, yeah, that'd be great. But yeah, yeah, if I could. So you want to be Superman, basically? Yeah, yeah, Superman would be great. That'd be awesome. <laughs> so, uh, Lance, uh, a message uh, to young professionals, young accountants, uh, you know, uh, in general, and let's say, uh, you know, a lot of accountants from India, in particular, right? Uh, you know, we have like hundreds and you know, thousands of. Uh, uh, young accountants who are, uh, you know, excited about the American dream, uh, you know, taking up the, the U.S. pathway, the Miles U.S. pathway, doing a STEM designated program, excited about working in America, sort of finding a life here. So what's your message to these young accountants? Um, my message to them is, like I said, unlimited is my word, but um, I, there's unlimited options if you go into accounting, you know, you know, and I also think people need your help. And so if you're into helping people and it's unlimited growth, unlimited people. I, I would love for people, I mean, America's an opportunity place. You can do whatever you want. The other thing is, is I think this is one of the greatest professions because you learn from your clients. So they do investment choices. They, are they buying real estate here? Or are they doing investments? Are they buying NVIDIA stock? You know, whatever they're doing. Bitcoins. Yeah, yeah Bitcoins, <laughs> you know, whatever they're doing. But you learn a lot from your clients. And so the other thing is, is being an accountant, you learn every, you know, education is huge, but you're learning every day. So. I usually tell people like you're, you know, when people start being an accountant, their, their head hurts because their brain working so much all the time. But, but it's really good for them and it, the experience and the experience. I mean, after 31 years, I've seen what clients do for their their portfolios, their investments, and you learn a lot. Like who you're like you, a business you're consulting them, you're supporting them, working with them. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So no, I I you you definitely um, I think. Anyone, I don't care if you're from any nation or whatever, you should be able to do be successful in this field. Thank you so much, Lance. This Thank was you. really, really amazing. Thank you.